Hey Soul Family, welcome to this Airy Season reading. My name is Audrey, I am your host for this forecast. Let's see what messages are meant to reach you for Airy Season from March 21st all the way to April 19th, 2024. You can watch those readings according to your sun or rising sign if you know it. I love working with the rising sign because it helps you integrate your sacred self, your sacred avatar, your higher self, and the embodiment of it. All right, so let's get started first with Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, whether sun or rising placement. All right. Let's see what we have here. The curious. What a beautiful spring energy also on this card. Love working with dragons. Dragons are the representation of an energy that helps us step out from survival mode. It is, you know, part of our brain to have what is called the reptilian mind. That is very much about survival. And the dragon is the ascended master of that version. So curious. All right. Ooh, la la. <laughs> Soulmate. What is meant for you is starting to bloom. Wow. Some of you, if you are single, seems like things are flourishing now it is also a collective message for airy season okay so we're seeing that there is an unfolding a blooming of things that are meant for us whether it's people situations places and so on and so forth wow you guys i mean Yin and yang. You're finding balance in airy season, and especially if you are a fire sign or a fire rising sign. Door to spirit. Some of you you've, may have prayed for the specific outcome or situation to come about. Healer of the ages. Wow, beautiful. By the way, we'll have the good tarot to help us deepen those cards and messages. All right, last cards. Choose a new direction. Look at this compass energy. When I get any type of compass energy, I look into my chart. So some of you looking into your natal chart, Knowing your natal chart, some of you, it's even knowing about your north node, maybe in what house, what sign. That's interesting. I would say that, okay, I'm going to, I'm receiving an interesting message, but an interesting message about maybe watching this reading in particular because of this card. Maybe there's an extra message in the element of your north node. So for example, if you are, um, let's say Virgo north node, the earth reading might have some details for you about airy season and its unfoldment. And this came with an another card which I love this energy. Look at this. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. So I feel following your bliss, my dear fire signs or rising fire signs or just for airy season. Following our bliss, letting things unfold after all this work through a whole entire zodiac year. You know, airy season is the first archetype on the zodiac wheel 
And so we're starting afresh, we're starting anew, and it seems that we're much more in alignment with spirit. We've done a lot of work on our healing journey, and things are just starting to fall into place. For the dragon, I want to read this card, you guys. Really feel. Number seven is a year, <laughs> is a number, well, I don't know why I felt year, but 2023 was... A number seven so maybe some of you everything that you've learned through the year seven okay and now it's the new cycle in 2024 okay of a zodiac will start in this airy season and this equinox we have an equinox so it seems that you're using all of this to let new doors that you probably never even expected to open to flourish and show you and guide you through the way all right let's see what the little booklet says here the curious being in the know is overrated k-n-o-w certainty is limited but being curious it leaves room for mystery, for surprise, for wonder. While dragons are known for great wisdom, they are also a, keep a door that is of open-mindedness to grow their fierce intelligence with curiosity. No new relationship, business, art, or scientific invention started without curiosity. Now is the time to investigate, ask questions, Open the mind and heart to approach your situation. With a dragon's eye and a curious eye, heart, you can see what others cannot. Oh, wow. See, definitely if some of you, you've been uh, wanting a new relationship or you've been looking for a relationship, there's in every season blooming of new opportunities, whether they're in relationship or could be work relationship, um, but there's definitely new unexpected things that are promised that are more in alignment with your direction. Maybe you had to make new choices. Maybe some of you, you did have to purge a lot of your past lives, the south nodes, where you were comfortable and stepping towards what is unknown and uncertain but yet gives you the opportunity to master new skills. Some of you, maybe there were specific things on this journey that you did not know how to approach, how to heal in the past. And now you have much more self-mastery. And it shows that you're going to be facing this season, this whole month, for Aries, in a very flowy way, very aligned. You feel very soul aligned, okay? Let's see other messages here. Okay, so usually when you have the bottom of the deck is usually a shadow card, okay? So let's see for some of us if there is any type of shadow or resistance, what could it be? Mmm, the six of earth, give and take. So... And I see this as a shadow. I want you to really consider if you are invested in relationships or job situation equally and receiving as much as you're giving. Okay, this is a card uh, that always kind of puts me back into looking at my uh, boundaries, my energy boundaries. Am I overgiving? Why am I overgiving? What's the reason? Am I feeling that I'm maybe some of you it's holding giving because there could be fear so in this airy season my fire sun and rising signs um, the only shadow oh it's interesting i put it under soulmate the only shadow is making sure that you align with any aspect of your life any place where you invest your energy and time you want it to be equally giving back 
okay and this is why it's interesting here new choose a new direction some of you it could be a hint that you might be changing direction changing relationships changing jobs changing homes okay so there could be some change okay and that means there's something greater awaiting um that is more spiritual line that might be feeling more like soothing to your heart and soul see what other messages for my fire placement it's also again the collective message the call so some of you what i feel especially with this is that <laughs> okay i'm sorry i'm gonna say this before it escapes my mind but i did see some of you receiving a call from an ex someone you already know calling back whether it's a yes or no i can't this is a collective reading you guys i can't invest um my full <laughs> integrity here um because some of you it's going to be a test of that shadow aspect and some of you it's going to be oh it's interesting here i see more like a new offer maybe a job offer some of you are applying for jobs or maybe you're applying for something that you want and uh you're going to get a yes maybe a loan or something like that very interesting so what i'm feeling is that every season for everyone but in particular for fire and sun and rising sign there's going to be a wake-up call there's going to be a lot of wanting to be on purpose wanting to be on a higher direction, uh, feeling curious about what is meant for us out there, okay? That I'm loving, loving this energy. Beautiful energy. What else? Okay, two cards. Oh, interesting. Interesting with the Ten of Fire, the Ten of Wands. I heard right away burning bridges. Some of you... Oh, this is interesting with the door to spirit here. Some of you, there is there's some energy bridges, you know, that needs to be untangled. Okay, maybe this type of, um, maybe some of you, you're going to get to text or a message or an opportunity. And it could be that sometimes you're going to have to say no or you're going to want to be clear about certain conditions. So it could be in a job like that you have to watch the terms and clause of whatever is being offered to you. Be curious. Don't immediately close the door. There could be things that have changed, people that have evolved, but you're going to want to use really your inner well tune balance of your mind and heart to perceive and have discernment on what is aligned with what you want not so much don't let yourself influence by what others want for you because you know best what is right for you especially at this time wow the nine of water go by the compass of your fulfillment Go and when I pull this yes here, this is definitely something I felt. Well, this is interesting. I'm doing this. Okay, you guys, this is something that I want to teach you. Some of you, I'm gonna put it here. Okay, and if you have a problem of the shadow aspect of give and take, what I love to do is that I put my fingers together here and I put it on my heart. So with my right hand, I put it on my heart, and then. I put my left hand here, okay? And then I can recite a mantra. So here I feel you could recite Satnam, uh, which is I am truth. It's about truth. So some of you, if you're struggling when you're receiving propositions, offers, ex coming back, whatever, new people, what, new situations, contracts, put this energy into your heart. This is your receiving hand. Okay, and call in whatever mantra I feel Satnam is aligned with this. Okay, so I am truth, and you see what is meant for you to receive. Okay, once you do this, 
Now you want to also change it and put the same mudra here into your heart and put your right hand, your giving hand, and recite a mantra. So I like Satnam for this one, for this particular message. And then kind of like see from your heart what is it that is equal giving, okay? So what feels like, feels fulfillment, feels like a yes, okay? I love working with a selenite plate. If you do not have a selenite plate and you have, for example, oh, I have like my gold healer's stone here. I could do the same thing holding the crystal and then putting my mudra onto my heart, okay? And, and then reversing. All right, that's something that I wanted to give you guys. You, Some of you know that I love to have frequency healing, meditative practices. And by the way, let's see if we have a supportive frequency as part of the ones that I've composed that can help while you're doing maybe this particular practice. All right. Oh, actually, I'm hearing it very simply. Work with the sun. Work with the sun frequency. You can chant Satnam and you can do this practice, okay? Because you're aligning with this message. Now, we saw that there were, could be whoop, some shadows with this. And we have, oh, I love this for you. The law of attraction and sacred union. That's what I call my my frequency. It could be a little bit of like a runner chaser. You know, it's almost like... Are we chasing what we think is meant for us, what we want, or are we calling in something that we want and holding a vibration that doesn't allow it? This is so good. It's also chanting Om Mani Padme Um, which could be a great uh, addition to your practice. So that's what I'm feeling so far for you in every season, my dear fire, sun, and rising signs. I do offer readings about your natal chart. Some of you, I feel that it could be interesting for you to know this type of details. What is the universe calling you or wanting to um, put you in alignment with and having confirmation maybe about certain bridges that need to be burned certain uh, past events, past lifetimes, habits, and programs that you want to release, okay? There's sometimes attachments that can be, you know, born out, even in negativity. We can just stay attached to this. So for any personal guidance, look into the detail box of this video. Thank you so much for being here and part of my journey. Remember to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. Namaste. If you were born under a sun or rising sign from the earth element, so if you are a Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, sun or rising sign, those messages are for you for every season. So March 21st all the way to April 19th, 2024. Let's see what we have. I just saw that I did not have yet yep, the cards for the good tarot let's see what we have for you my dear earth placements okay pile is bigger than i expected the pile is bigger than i expected is there a lot for you to chew on <laughs> let's see let's see here the balancer interesting with what i just said hmm now <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, especially like Taurus energy came up strongly with the appetite and liking food and the fact that, you know, this season with Aries starts also with an equinox, the spring, we like to do detox and fast. So I did feel that there could be some balance that are, especially as an earth element, it could be a message, you know, as far as grounding yourself and feeling more aligned that you want to um, address maybe a little bit of lighting up the load okay like I went the kind of the little lapses that I did at the beginning with this energy we'll read this card okay a hole in the soul 
this is my this is a childhood trauma card here this is interesting and especially when we talked about appetite or chewing more than what we should i felt right away a couple of things i felt um you know eating emotional eating if some of you feel like you know sometimes you are trying to empty a hole of loneliness or feeling maybe lack of purpose or misaligned or any type of anxiety it could come from a dynamic that is much older than uh, what is really occurring at that moment by the way if you want to have the collective energy reading message I would suggest watching the fire so the first part of this reading there's a lot of alignment towards new doors of opportunity that are blooming because we are in alignment because we've done a lot of that healing so for you with earth placement sun and rising see that you want to make sure that you're not chewing more than put too much on your plate and that means literally <laughs> like food but also as far as your work make sure that you unload because maybe some of you that's something that i discovered uh as part of my childhood trauma that uh, my hyperactivity and my ability to multitask and be super efficient and proficient uh in a lot of things <laughs> was coming from a reaction of my trauma and the way I was conditioned. I find it very interesting. I am going to write this down for you guys. And I'm going to add for some of you, if you do have any type of personal trauma, um, I'm going to put a link to the a video that I posted on my Telegram that is about some 11 oddly uh, weird uh, childhood trauma response. Just like being productive here uh, in that sense. And you'll know when you listen to the video. So add video uh, 11. Okay. All right, you guys, I, I, I like to do this for you because readings, they're, they're really useful, yes, to give you comfort. I don't know why. I feel like maybe some of you, that's what you need at this time. Um, but to help you um, and guide you so you reconnect with your own guidance. You have that inner compass. I have to tell you that I started having a slight liver pain, which brings about toxicity so some of you maybe you had to deal with a lot of toxicity as a child and you're still in that process of removing or if you've already done a lot of this but it's still maybe some layers that you need to process i personally did 10 days uh fasting three days prep and seven days fully fast uh you know um, that I really wanted to do to start this season. So some of you, you might be called to have certain rituals of protocols of cleansing yourself, whether they're religious or not, just uh, know that. Now I want to add that in the collective reading, there was a suggestion to listen to the season reading according to your North Node. So that's something that I'm going to probably add in the title. Um, and that would mean that if you have a Leo North node, then definitely go check out the fire reading. If you have a Pisces North node, then go check out the water. Okay, that's interesting how this time that's the guidance I receive for this. Now let's see. First chakra, Archangel Michael. That, that really goes well together. We're going to deepen this. Hey, didn't we talk about this? Anxiety. And women holding a coin. Interesting. Let's see, let's see. I have so many messages for you, my dear Earth. Sun rising. And <laughs> North Node. <laughs> interesting reconsider now this right away makes me think of the full moon that's going to occur in Aries season and that's going to be march 25th in libra 
And this is um, Agalaz, a rune that speaks of surrendering, but also releasing something that crumbles down. Uh, you know, you might, and it's going to be a lunar eclipse. So it seems that there's definitely here. I love this energy for you. I feel more like here. There was something that was affecting your manifestation that was giving you anxiety because maybe some of the programs were about lack and victimhood, okay, that you inherited because we see the coin here. Maybe a fear uh, of lack, a fear of not being a pow powerful enough in your manifestation to survive, but we're not even wanting to just survive, we want to thrive, okay? But there is definitely in airy season, if you have earth, sun, rising, or north node, something that wanted to come out to the light and be eclipsed, so be removed. Now, interesting that this energy also for the dragon is wearing red and black, red and black. Now, dragon energy is the ascended master of the part of our brain that is the reptilian mind, the survival mode. So it shows here that there's something that wants to be balanced and wants to be removed Especially what is very interesting when I talk to you about productivity, that this lunar eclipse is going to be in the 10th house. So the house of purpose, we could also be the house where we work. Where do we put our energy into work, into our coins, into like making money? And there's something in the placement and degrees of this lunar eclipse is about rituals. So that means there's a certain habit. You see here, certain thing we've rehearsed because just like a program that is going to want to be removed. I love this. Let's read this dragon energy. I had to just interrupt for a few seconds so I could cough. And Right away, when I started seeing how my health has been progressing, especially since the cleanse, I'm purging a lot of things out of my body. I wanted to share with you, because some of you, maybe you're really interested in health and are interested in removing some of those things to the level and depth of what is within your organs. Okay, so through this fasting, I did a lot of music frequency healing with my organs to remove some of those programs from my childhood and see how they were connecting, how, you know, they were releasing, making me like have uh, some type of reflex or some type of energy release, blockages, whatever. But what I thought was the part that I wanted to share is that when I came out of the fast, I was asking my higher guidance, so how am I supposed to eat? What's the best way? Blah, blah, blah. And it was showing me like, just trust that with this level of emptiness and this renewal that you went through, you're going to know. And it led me to a place I actually never invested or just very uh, surface level to look into my dosha. So to look at Ayurvedic um, medicine and science for diets and principles of eating. And I have to say that so far, all the things already, the fast that I was suffering with light elements that were of matter, you know, my lungs and certain things that I was, you know, seeing that I wanted to optimize, I'm seeing already a difference coming into that awareness. So some of you just wanted to mention doshas and Ayurvedic approach that could be helpful. Okay, so let's read the balancer, which is card number one. Hmm. Putting yourself first is what I'm hearing. This is interesting. <clears throat> I just posted a reel about this for, I think it was, let me see you guys. <laughs> is there, that could be an energy message for you. Uh, what transit was this? 
Oh, the first quarter moon. So yes, so Medusa, <laughs> which was about making sure that before, yeah, one of the greatest tip to success is to be in alignment before making decisions. Okay, so it seems to be important for you. Before you act, take a moment to balance. Every dragon knows that the best pounce comes from a balanced position. Whatever you're up against at this moment, the sacred pause is needed first. Don't decide, don't act. Take a moment to consider all the options and find your footing. Clear thinking, compassionate feeling, and balanced power are what is needed right now. Okay, so I feel you being in balance, my earth placements, okay, sun rising and north node is going to be of the essence for this season, okay? There's ways of going about a certain, some of you, there's ways to resolve a certain situation, maybe even your coins, okay? That you're not seeing yet, and that will be revealed, okay? When you're watching this, maybe it's not clear yet. Be patient and remember one thing, ask. Ask and let yourself receive. Once you ask, don't go and continue asking. Let the signs come to you. Because if you're always putting that hyper focus on the outside, you're not open to the energy to come your way. You're always sending out. Okay? All right. Perfect. I feel in alignment now with continuing for you. So let's see. Okay, yes. I want to see if there's any other shadows for this. Mm. Five of water. I'm hearing right away. Regret and remorse. Some of you it's regret, some of you it's remorse. Or, <laughs> that's an interest, I've felt that many times in my life. Do or don't, you feel doomed. <laughs> some, sometimes in our relationships, whether we take the action, we don't take the action, we feel that either way, we're not going to be seen, heard, and appreciated. I feel this is something of that sort. And it seems to be in alignment with that childhood wound. It could be with the five of water loss, financial loss. It could be. Some of you really, I, I want to share with you because, you know, finances are not a fun thing to struggle with. Um, I remember having a period of time where uh, I had such low boundaries and unbalanced relationships and dynamics, never asking for equality, that I didn't even could focus on that first. I was really the bottom of survival. So I saw that I asked my higher guidance, hey, how can I get to that level where I can have space for my boundaries and doing all this work without having to <laughs> like feel like I'm going to be in the streets? And I was given a specific step-by-step -step protocol for me, and it worked magics. Now, it might not be very different for you, but for me, I remember it was like, Audrey, you're expecting that you're going to live <laughs> longer than today. And I was like, uh, okay, <laughs> great, thank you. What are you saying? But it just showed me that, you know, instead of like making a full tank of gas, I just needed whatever, $5. Well, that was years ago. So five, $5 at the time for, you know, that day. Even if I had to go every day, a gas station was closed, whatever. So if I was just spending what I needed for the day in food and everything, and I saw that I was actually able to stretch it longer, and then my estimate of what I really needed was over, over what it was really, okay? And then I, I had fear around paying bills. And it, it's funny when I put it in the hands of the universe and working with this protocol that was my higher guidance, everything was always paid on time with ease and no worries, which was never my reality before because I was always living in that repetition of chaos from my childhood. So I wanted to share this. And again, that's not like a step-by-step, -step, like it's a method or whatever, but it worked very well for me to take distance 
uh, from whatever felt very present and then give me anxiety and really help me step out of my um, situation. Um, that kind of like give me more and more scarcity mentality at the time. All right. That I didn't even know I had. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. Okay. So some of you might be um, relevant, but it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, uh, this exact protocol. Ace of Earth. I love this. I love this because when you remove, when you address this wound, my dear Earth placements here, right away I'm seeing like this is going to shift your reality right away. Because the Ace of Earth is a gift. It's a huge pentacle. So huge pentacle. What's interesting is that I always uh, associate antlers to telepathy. So I would say your higher self, just like in my little story, your higher self knows the way out of whatever cycle, but especially for you to find your prosperity for you to step in. And also, some of you, I feel, remember there was this Medusa energy? The goddess's energy seems to be relevant. So some of you, if you don't know, I do offer goddesses readings. They're, it's been an amazing experience for everyone that's gotten it. It's been amazing for me when I got activated with Medusa upon a full moon in Gemini, because my Medusa is in Gemini. It... It changed my way of relating and also Medusa, when you're not in alignment, will make you feel heavy, stone, so heavy because it's trying to show you that's not the way. So it turns you more and more stagnant, and especially if you have this earth placement, stagnancy is not going to feel good. Okay, it's not going to feel good, especially if you water the stagnancy and it's almost like you're going to create a brick. Okay. So that could be a guidance to use and tap into your higher uh, self and especially your mutable energy, your feminine energy. She will know how to remove those obstacles. The two of earth. A lot of earth coming back to ground you. And certain, again, this speaks of balance. This speaks of work in place. So some of you, maybe especially work seem to be a lot like work like you feeling your worth according to how much you produce and there's something that the sacred family it's almost like imagine like like the poor chickens and the hens and, and we're always trying to produce or just like a woman that is like imagine just like just produce babies just birth 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 and keep on birthing but just the whole process of enjoying the child enjoy and re recouping and, and you know engaging with what you produce there's there's definitely here maybe some um hamster wheel that you were and that's very much about that very low basic um matrix we're in um and stepping out of that is like the nine to five you know and just like repeating and just showing up and doing the same thing and again and again and just more and more and just having too much on your plate so if you feel any anxiety through every season with displacement um definitely you have to unload your plate unload your plate find more peace for i'm, I'm hearing find more peace for your meals take more time for caring for yourself okay look at this the hermit with the seven of air in this deck this actually speaks of the, di the, the inner variety, the, the creativity, the uniqueness. I, I feel here, this is kind of aligning with my little story. It's going to ask you in airy season, if you have earth, um, sun rising or north node, to go within to have access to all the solutions that are very uniquely yours, especially in terms of money in terms of your stability in terms of being on a path that feels wholesome 
okay that's what i have for you as far as the cards let's just see if we have a frequency healing that can help we know we have the sun frequency that you can meditate maybe some of you that can help you find what exact you know um wound needs to be healed oh well oh same okay so same as the law of attraction and sacred union. Om Mani Padme Hum. It helps purge a lot of negative conditionings, especially if some of you, you had low boundaries and energy boundaries. You absorbed a lot of outside energies, maybe even the stress, maybe just driving to work, you're picking up on the stress from people stuck in traffic and things like this. So working with the law of attraction and sacred union can help you. I would say you can use the sun frequency and chant Om Mani Padme Hum. You could do chanting to the sun or chanting the seed mantra for the sun and have another cycle with this. And then you can just listen. It's up to you. I'm giving you options. I know I like to play with those options, but it seems that there is a sacred alignment through every season that is meant for you. And it needs a removal of a certain, it seems to be a heavy, it was something very dark. It was something that was very hard. You see, there's a lot of things here that needed rebalancing. Now, Archangel Michael is also working with Archaea Faith. So have faith to ask your higher self god the universe whatever to give you the keys and the details of how to approach this phase whenever you're facing with some of those maybe anxiety moments or triggering energies but what i love beyond this is that on the other side of all this there is the greatest gift of seeing how your <clears throat> wow how your variety of of experience your uniqueness your creativity is going to shine okay there's a lot of i feel unlocked unleashed potential and it might be also connected to the throat maybe how you were spoken to and as a result you start speaking about life and yourself okay if you need personal guidance, look into the details below. And please remember to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. Namaste. If you were born with an air sun rising or north node placement, that means Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, sun rising or north node. This is something that was not expected, but that came through with the collective reading for fire because every season, obviously, it was something about looking at the north node. There is definitely here an alignment to our highest direction. So I want to mention it if you're called to watch more than one message. All right. So my dear air placements, Let's see what we have. Let me put back those cards so they can get charged. Interesting, I felt we saw the card underneath. Okay. Did you see it or not? The shadow. I don't know why do I feel like I want to start with the shadow. The high priestess. Might be... That's interesting. Okay. The sun... Because we're working here with the sun energy when we work with the zodiac archetypes and the season. The sun is connected to the third eye chakra in the front. Now the number two, yes, is the high priestess for the major arcanas. But now in terms of zodiac position, this is Aries five to ten degrees and it speaks of relationships and the mirror of others so there's something that i feel that maybe you're not seeing in aries season that is going to be revealed okay in terms of what the universe is reflecting to you could be a relationship but we'll see let's put it aside 
And let's start like the other ones, please. <laughs> you seem to be very unique, my dear. Uh, um, ah, wow. <laughs> Air. All the elements wanted to show up. This is interesting. Okay. Maybe some of you, it's because you're just watching different um, messages according to your birth chart. So let's see. With the air principle, let's call it that. Let's see what we have. Ooh, the receiver. Do you see the connection here? Like an antenna. Sending out your intentions in the world. Ask and you shall receive. It's definitely a feeling of something coming your way. Mm. Okay. Now with the energy of the number 12 here, I don't know why I feel called to say this, there is this message of looking within to find home, to find security, to find everything that is needed. Looking within and the inner sights. It seems that you're being activated here, uh, my dear air placements, to some higher activation to level up. Oh, and by the way, you see, you have like a very unique pile because while we're using this deck of cards, this one was mixed in the card deck. So I felt that it was also part of the message. Solace, return to nature, tree wisdom, natural remedies, and flower essences. Beautiful. Also feels like the womb energy. Some of you, they could be womb healing or just something that you're... I feel like almost like if you're an artist, like you're, there's a creation. You're creating something. Some of you, especially with this baby dragon... Pregnancy is on the horizon. Sorry, I gotta say it. Some of you, you're getting pregnant. <laughs> or you're getting, you're becoming a father. Wow, my right ear, you guys just start like ringing. But a very interesting tone. One second. I do have an app for this. Hmm. D. Do, re, mi, D. So it could be, wow, it's, it's the womb. So I had to check this. And yes, it shows sacral D. Wow. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just so baffled. It's, yeah. I did do music you know, training and ear training, and I'm, I'm used to hear a certain tone. Uh, but yeah, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so I'm just baffled sometimes how things just align. There's some of you, if look at this, there's the number two coming. It feels uh, it's not meant for everyone, but some of you, I'm feeling that if you're not pregnant and something that you want to be, the frequency is already becoming a match as if it's like the soul of your child already connecting with you and that desire. That's how intense it feels. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little shaky because it's, it's just, it's, it's beautiful. I don't think shaky is the word, but um, just overwhelmed with, with gratitude here. Look at this. So some of you, if it's not a child, it is something that is meant for you to create, okay? Oh. Okay, so the card that was from the deck that was meant for you, look at this, home. It's, there's so much inward energy, even receiving brings the energy inward. Okay, let's, let's pull all those cards. Door to romance. What's going on, my dear air principle? Indecision. Okay, let's, let's align differently because we have... Let's align differently. <laughs> it's interesting. 
It feels like some of you, you're being called to create space for whatever it is that you desire. That's what I'm feeling. The garden and the gate. Okay. And one more card. Let's talk about all this. No need to worry. Look how cute. I love this little guy. Porcupine. Or hedgehog. hedgehog. I'm sorry. It's not my first language. So sometimes I get confused. Not porcupine. I think hedgehog. Something like that. Or is it? I'm not sure. You let me know, you guys. All right. I freaking did not expect this my air principle so if you are an air sun sign or a rising sign or your north node is an air position okay it seems that the universe is saying we have something for you that wants to be birthed whether it's a child or a project it's definitely something that you want Something that maybe with the reflection and we saw that shadow, maybe you've been looking outside of yourself and wanting it. So some of you feel like if you're looking at people that have, you know, a child that are parents and you're like, oh, I want this in my life or whatever, something that they manifested and that you can see is available from the universe and you're seeing for happening for others. For this to come, and I can tell you, I heard the frequency, so it's already your desire when you say, hey, I wish this happened. I wish I had this. I, you already created that frequency. I heard it. It was in my right ear. Okay, so that masculine aspect, it's already out in the like conceivable. It's coming as a conceivable thing that wants to be manifested. But there is, with this indecision here, some space that needs to be made. And we'll see what that is, okay? Let's first listen to the dragon energy message. You kind of like really threw me, <laughs> threw me off here, my dear air placements. Oh, <laughs> it's just like, what? I can't believe it. Some of you, it's like a huge surprise. This is interesting because... Aries season reading, the collective energy had this message with the dragon energy that a surprise was coming. So some of you could be a surprise pregnancy, but this is definitely something you will love. Love, 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 love. Okay? So, dragons have no problem with amassing wealth. You could learn a thing or two from them today. Whether that wealth comes in the form of financial opportunity, unexpected help, gift, a generous offer, or an anticipated kindness, unanticipated kindness, your power and prowess depend on flexing your receiving muscle. There is no room here to question deserveness. As with all magical creatures, you deserve every good and lovely thing this world and all the others can provide. Receive freely and experience the wealth that true reciprocity can bring. The universe wants to give you. That's interesting because I gave a certain ritual with using this selenite plate and mudras and mantras that I want you to check out in the fire placement. I'm not going to repeat it, but I definitely with this energy, you want to make sure that you're balancing your giving and receiving. Okay. Let's see what else. What is it? We saw that is worthiness. Saw that it could be deservedness. What's going on? The queen of earth. There's actually, there is, you know, something that wants to be grounded for you. And it could be, and here I feel like it's something you love. So there is financial, I'm hearing freedom for some reason, financial freedom that is coming your way. 
But I feel as some of you, there might be some hesitance and we'll see if those cards are helping us. Five of Earth. This is the Five of Pentacles. This is usually like how we're we're feeling abandoned. We're feeling rejected. So this is interesting because that goes back to the law of attraction and sacred union frequency that I gave uh, for the collective and for the fire placement. But I also happen to give it, and the same card came through as medicinal frequency. Uh, healing for um, earth so I would say that's going to be the same one so I'm not going to pull more cards you're going to want to listen to the law of attraction and sacred union I will pull maybe another card in terms of maybe the worthiness thing that is happening but there's something about you feeling that you're not deserving who put that in that in you definitely nurtured it because it's still there so maybe that's maybe that was a wound from the from the home you didn't feel worthy or there was always some type of worry and decisions were needed to be based on what you could concretely afford and not so much following what you love. I love this that it's coming for you at this time, my dear air placement, because it seems that that's something that you knew at a heart soul level. That if you followed your bliss, if you followed your desires, that it would lead to everything that was meant for you. There's the tower. So we're moving away from some of the old structures. Great. We want this. And the messenger of earth. There's a new way of receiving. Your receptivity, and this was the shadow, there, the, you may be experiencing a block in your third eye. Okay, so I would say here, work with the sun frequency, and you can recite Om Mani Padme Hum, to help with this okay we're going to see if there is another frequency that can help with this block let's see my dear air placement mm, this one mm, the super empath playlist ending energy and desire entanglement remember when i said who put this this in you this is an old program of whatever experience you have had okay maybe it was around raising children if some of you is about uh birthing um a baby or not maybe having the means to birth whatever you want not having the financial freedom this season is meant for you to release this and let yourself receive because <laughs> You guys, if you didn't see it, I physically felt it. Like you, you saw me sing the note and you saw me take, you know, I, I have like that calibration that can tell me. So I know according to what I'm reading or what I'm talking about or sensing what it aligns to. It's already in the frequency. So if the frequency already exists, it's already there. It's just waiting for you to create that space. So there was probably some energy entanglement and that usually happens, okay? For example, maybe some of you is past relationships where you projected yourself with certain desires. We'll build this and we'll have this together. And it could be even in a workplace. You could be like, oh, and I'll do this and this. So you open those doors and you created those frequencies and vibrational things that may have led to certain outcomes. But there is some, when you end a relationship or you end a job, there's other people that may have started dreaming with you, started fantasizing with you. You want to make sure that those, those if they're still trying to get onto that frequency, that you are untangled from it. 
That's where we're feeling the push and pull sometimes in the secret union within ourselves. It's like we say we want something and yet we hold a belief that goes against it. So it can't be born. Okay, so you can find this in relationship where someone wants to leave, but the other doesn't. And like it stays in that, that shakiness because we're not aligning what to do what the soul wants and i can tell you it's a soul alignment definitely it's part of the collective reading it's more and more going to be part of everything that is going to give you success because there's a huge garden awaiting for you there's huge freedom financial whatever romantic but you have and i feel like here especially with this don't feel that you are having to choose between success and love. It's all love. And it has to be felt authentically. So it just vibrates even at a greater frequency. Okay, so just trust this process. I would say here, you know, um, meditation is going to help you. Um, looking at maybe your womb. I do have a womb detoxifier. Um, that is part of the frequency. Some of you, uh, that's in my empath survival kit that can help you. Okay. And uh, I do offer personal guidance. So if that's something that you can look in the details below. Thank you so very much. Namaste. If you were born with a water, sun, rising or north node placement. Yes, I'm adding the north node because it came up in the collective reading for the fire placement, obviously every season, that we have to look at our north node. So I wanted you to have all available messages, okay? And uh, that's one of the options. So we know for water, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces, Sun, rising or north node those are your messages yes that wasn't expected but i'm really liking this for the uh channeling of a zodiac archetype so let's see what we have for you my dear water placement the grouch <laughs> sorry Actually, this card speaks of boundaries, just so you know. But I find it very interesting. We'll read this little card. So pay attention to your boundaries. This is interesting because this is the ascended master, the dragon, okay, of the part of your brain that's reptilian, that's in survival. And it's saying, yeah, you know, you have to be very aware of your energy boundaries, my dear water placement. It's not surprising with this water quality in principle. Self-sabotage. That goes very well with the boundaries. I see I'm being called to look at the hand on the belly and the flame that got blown out. I feel that you may have suffered from people trying to dim your light or you dim your light in the past not to stand out in a family cluster in a group cluster or you kind of suffered this type of energy let's see what else door to personal healing and happiness oh this is beautiful this is beautiful i feel like you're becoming super strong my water placements <laughs> victory super super strong and actually brighter than ever before and the thinking man with those crystals I mean call to look at the feathers especially so when I said feathers, I thought about obviously angels and seeing here, maybe you had to be a bright light in the dark um, to actually realize some of your beauty, your quality and what you brought to the table. This last card, 
unlikely, but look at this. Wow. You're breaking off the chain, the ties that held you back. And I'm not surprised. March 25th, we have a lunar eclipse in the sign of Libra. Okay. And it's going to be in the 10th house. So, and then the degrees of Libra that speaks of rituals, they were in that, that for you, it's a self-sabotage ritual. You were used to dim your light or dim your potential or not wanting to stand out because you worried about the group and how you were perceived. It's your being called with Aries season to really step up and shine on. <laughs> I don't know what, why I'm hearing this in this fashion, but this is what I'm hearing. Shine on. Almost like live on. Like there is... you. Okay, messages are making sense more and more as I'm <laughs> rambling. Uh, when I said shine on, live on, you're a legacy of many, many lifetimes of you experiencing some of those dark patterns and, and, and dualistic contrast. And you have mastered the art of still holding on to your light within, even if you blew it out for others on the outside. You see how much she still glows. And she's protected by this white owl and even by the moon. Some of you, you are like, like that wild moon child. You have a keener intuition and you navigate life in very different ways than the average. So you had that inner light within that was helping you navigate. But you did self-sabotage. And we're removing this. The universe is removing any type of self-sabotage tendencies. My dear, water placement. Let's read the grouch. <laughs> Let's read the grouch. The grouch, the grouch. It's interesting because I feel like with you right now reading and, and going about your reading, I feel like I want to pause more and especially breathe more. Take more breaths. Especially here with the dragon. It's almost like there's some type of mastery. Maybe it's to flame that fire. Okay. There's something that will be removed. Some ties, some karmic patterns, habits that will be removed. Situations and also especially some of you relationships. Okay. Okay. That will be removed and that in that process you want to breathe you want to breathe more because you're going to see how much it's going to give you back some light some of you you didn't realize how heavy was that energy around you but there's some very strong divine protection let's see okay grouch grouch grouch, grouch. okay dragons have fierce teeth for a reason. Use them to guard your boundaries and protect your space. Snarl, growl, you're allowed to be feisty and fierce when protecting your boundaries and personal sovereignty. There's a time and space for compromise and cooperation. Now is not that time. Huff, puff, flex those scales no one messes with you today. You get to decide when and how you wish to engage. Interesting. I feel like especially when you decide, you get to decide when and how you wish to engage. Some of the people and the triggers are going to be people that want to maybe engage with you at their own timing. And it's going to require of you to Give yourself some space. That's what I've been feeling for you. Like I'm almost like, it's not hesitancy. It's more like, I'm in that moment. 
<laughs> and it's interesting what just happened. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sorry. But it's just when I just breath, breathe, breathed, <laughs> breathed. I just saw like when I was like trying to like put myself in this situation of someone. We, I breathed and everything dissipated. And I was like, so what's the emergency? There is none. And that means that if you do not feel that there's an e emergency, sometimes people, maybe some of you, you are, especially with the self-sabotage, you may have been involved in narcissistic dynamics and relationships. So that means that maybe they're, they feel they're entitled to your time whenever it is meant for best for them. But when I gave myself the space to breathe, I was like, I did see the truth. There was no emergency. Probably some ego, but my breath took me so much higher than that frequency that I did not see anything that I could relate to on that level. So interesting, my water signs. So interesting. I feel you're really at a level here of frequency that is beautiful. Uh, I'm being called to mention the rainbow bridge here. Some of you, if you're, especially with the ties, if you're struggling with going from this version of you to this empowered version of you, the one that you used to self-sabotage, use the rainbow frequency. I chant a mantra, who? H U. It's an ancient word and sound for God. Okay. And that could be used with the sun frequency because we're channeling the sun as energy in Aries. And you can help bridge this with who. It's actually interesting. I've worked with this over the weekend and I had not worked with this frequency for a long time and I had forgotten how supportive that bridge feels like. Okay, so let's move on to, I was going to say the cards, but I heard the shadows. So the shadows is the last card of the deck. Let's see what we have. Oh, patience. Ooh, what did we say about that emergency? Watch that if you feel in the month of a season of Aries, any type of emergency to act, to do, I don't have the time. This will not be the right time. Breathe. I've been feeling this sometimes when, you know, I have like so many cosmic events that I want to channel and want to create. And then I'm like, you know what? If I'm creating in that emergency energy, I'm not getting the proper messages. I can't because there is an illusion that is fueling me that I need to. And it's not the energy I want. It's I get to. I get to do this because I love it. Okay, so some of you, that might be also like, you know, uh, if you have like people that's like, oh, you didn't call me. Why don't you call? You're supposed to have that desire to reach out to people. So watch those old programs that would keep you loop, looping in in self-sabotage, focus on your peace with the dove. Focus on feeling your aura, your light shine more and more so. We'll see here because I do have um, an album called Your Oracle Health and Wealth. That could be uh, interesting. I feel for some of you, I'm feeling it. If you are a YouTube member, there is a room removing X's and hexes with an H that I would suggest if you have a hard time with the ties. Otherwise, you could use, like the hand just reminded me, use the womb, auric detoxifier with the womb. Okay, you're sharing your mother's auric field for seven years. A lot of things that were true to your parents, especially the mother, will become a subconscious programs. And here there is a subconscious program that is you're breaking. It's almost like I'm feeling here you're uh, breaking the pattern. You're becoming like the, uh, the, the 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 little virus in that program that just breaks breaks it off. That means like 
you know, that, that was, that was a program that was not serving you. So we implanted this healthy virus to just break off that chain. So it's like, it's a change and it's connected to your peace. And the only shadow you will have is connected to any, any sense of emergency. Do not respond upon emergency. Respond upon your own divine time. This will be the best time. Yes, the nine of earth. This will be the best time because everything that you will create, materialize, will make you feel fulfilled, will make you feel grateful, will make you feel whole, make you feel seen and appreciated and wholesome. Especially with the earth element here and the boundaries energy. I feel like it's, it's she's, this energy makes me feel like there's a building of a temple, of a temple, energy temple that is etherical and yet so strong. The emperor. In the zodiac wheel, the number four is in Aries. And it speaks of initiative and empowerment. This is where we have currently the North Node and Chiron. So this is about your power. This is about your inner power. But I love the Emperor's energy because I really connected also to the Father, to maybe um, being guided to act from a higher point of view, maybe also God's view, God's desire. And I feel that you have to trust in your own alignment with your God self. Let you know that God and the universe moves through you. Okay, this other card was at the bottom. Let's see, there's another shadow. It came in reverse. The five of fire the five of wands, it's interesting because that would speak of inner conflict. So watch whenever you have inner conflicts that will impact your creativity because it's almost like you're wanting to do those things, but maybe someone call, left you a message, call me back now, whatever. And with the thinking man, watch how without proper energy boundaries, I feel especially as a water placement here, you might be very susceptible to be psychically attacked and manipulated. So some of you, it might be something that you want to uh, review is the super empath. I do have activate your psychic boundaries and, um, you know, how to end and prevent psychic manipulation. Okay. I would say those are really big for you. What you could do you could take some of the mantras from that super empath energy and chant it with the sun. So you bring it to the forelight. You bring it to your own awareness. So you kind of know how to address this, maybe in a greater way that helps you bring more peace. Because some of you, you might still struggle with those boundaries. It, 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 it came as another shadow, okay? of your success. This month, my dear water placement, you're supposed to be very successful. And what I mean successful is like that sense of success and achievement, not by being overproductive, but being soul aligned in alignment with what it is that your higher self, your God self feel is of the essence and not upon any other people's agenda or, you know, uh, priorities. Your priorities are, need to be respected. That's what I feel for you. And that's what I have. Let's see if there is anything else in terms of frequency that we did not mention. Okay. Oh, this one again just came up pretty much for everyone. Om Mani Padme Um, the law of attraction. If there's anything that you're asking and that you're not receiving, that you might be holding a contradictory, an opposite belief, okay? And especially with the thinking and the wands and the inner turmoil, I would say that if you have to remove certain things, it could be a certain way of thinking. Maybe that's what you inherited from the womb, a way of thinking and related to yourself, to your potential, what you're capable 
or not to do, and especially the not. And that means that this season, really spend time with yourself to offer that space. This is going to be primordial. That's what I have. Thank you so much for being here. If you need personal guidance, look into the details of that video description. And don't forget to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. Namaste.